Okay, so this video is about how to use the Insta360 on a bike. You may have one, you may be thinking of buying one. There's a few tips coming up on how to use this and more importantly, how to use it safely. So keep watching to the end of the video to learn a few tips about the best way to use the Insta360 X3. So one of the first things about the Insta360 is it's a pretty solid bit of kit. It's quite heavy. It weighs about 220 grams with a selfie stick, probably about 330, something like that. So it is quite heavy. So when you've got it on the standard mount and you extend it, or if you're trying to shoot with it extended to its full length, if you've got it a metre away from the bike, there's quite a lot of sort of leverage on that that's going to affect the bracket it's holding, that's holding it. So we'll have a look at that in a second to see the best ways to use the bracket, the bracket it comes with, but also some other brackets. Okay, so the bracket it comes with is this sort of plastic nylon polymer bracket. It's pretty good. It's um, got quite a secure fastening. It's got a, a turnable mount. So you just press the little lever down and you can turn that in various directions. And it's got the standard sort of GoPro action camera mount. One thing I found with this though is because it is plastic, or a type of plastic, it's, you know, you're never sort of quite sure how far you can tighten it um, before it might break. So I've always sort of erred on the side of caution with this. One of the problems with it is, because you're not sure how much to tighten it with the weight of the X3, um, it can move on the bike. Um, one other little thing is, it does come with a little bit of padding underneath uh, this bracket here but it isn't enough. And I found that unless you put more in, that bolt there will scratch your handlebars. So if you've got carbon bars or bars you just particularly don't particularly want to scratch, um, you need to put further padding inside. And also further padding will probably help a little bit with the vibration you get on the bike and sort of soften it a bit. The other thing with this mount is that I found no matter how much you tighten it, again, and you're not sure how much to tighten it because it is plastic, however much you tighten it, once you've got that selfie stick attached on the bike, it will still move when you go over a bump. So if you're riding along and you hit a bump, that is going to move. Okay, so you really need to be prepared for that. Okay, so here's the mount on the handlebar, as you can see. And my first problem I encountered using the X3 with the um, selfie stick on the bike was going along when the selfie stick was extended. So there you are, the stick is about 50 centimeters out from the handlebar, would be a good position to film in if I could do that. The problem is with this mount, even though it's tightened up here as much as I can do it, as you can see, the camera has just swung right down by the wheels. And that's what happened on my first um, ride out, almost losing the camera and going over the handlebars in one go. Okay, so one other tip with the um, the X3 is thinking about the way the mount is. Obviously, as we've said about the movement in the mount sometimes, um, one way you can sort of alleviate that is by actually rotating the mount. So when it's on the bike, there isn't that vertical movement. There could be lateral movement side to side, but you've sort of eliminated by turning it round the movement up and down um, with the, the X3, particularly when it's on the, the selfie stick. Okay, so that's uh, another little useful thing you can do. And obviously with this one and the other, the metal mount, you can rotate both of them. So if you wanted to, you can, you know, have that vertical movement, but that does ease that situation a little bit if you turn the mount slightly one way or the other. So as I said, you could probably rotate that sideways 
which prevents that from happening. But how much um, force is going to be on this joint here when you've turned it that way, I don't know, to be honest. Now, because I wanted um, something a bit stronger than the plastic bracket or something I knew I could tighten up pretty tight, I've got aluminium bars on a couple of my bikes and um, I know I can tighten things up pretty tight on those, I opted to buy a metal mount, which I'll link in the description below, um, which I found to be pretty good. The nice thing about this is, is because it is all aluminium, all metal, um, you can tighten it pretty tight. It does come with a little bit extra padding than the standard um, 360 mount. Um, so that's quite good. It hasn't scratched the handlebars. You can tighten it up much tighter with these and it does provide a really solid um, position on the bar. And also it's got this style mount or movable mount. So you basically you unscrew it pull it and twist it. And then once it's on the bar in a fixed way, you can then angle the camera any way you like. And also because it is metal again, you can tighten it up much tighter. The actual mount itself doesn't come with the um, these mount bits here. I had to buy those separately, but I think they're about eight pounds for two. So pretty, you know, pretty good value. And that works really well, particularly, I mean, you can, use it on the uh, the X3 itself. But I found it does work pretty well when connecting it to a selfie stick because once that's tightened up and because it's aluminium, you can bo tighten both things up pretty tight. It provides a very solid um, structure for the camera to be on. And I found even with the selfie stick then extended to its full length, it's um it's quite a robust situation. I think I prefer it much more to the, the plastic mount it came with. And you can, as I said, extend that to the full length or, you know, as much as you need. And it is quite a good solid um, mount. One problem I did have is when I first got it, the, the X3 comes with a variety of mounts itself and it comes with Um, a few plastic mounts like this when you buy the um, pack. Funnily enough, I got the snow bundle. Not that I ever go skiing, not anymore. Um, but the, the skiing pack, I think, pretty much is exactly the same as the, um, the cycling or the bike pack. And the mount to me looks identical so that's the one I went for it comes with some inserts for smaller poles or you know parts of the bike I guess if you needed to put it on there like the chain stay maybe or the one of those sort of areas down the back of the bike but the problem I used, I found in the beginning was I didn't have these metal mounts so I opted to use one of the plastic mounts that came with the um, X3 I used that combined with a metal mount and unfortunately, I was going along a very bumpy road and this is really solid and there isn't a lot of movement in it at all. And basically the plastic mount I had in there fractured and the camera fell off the bike, which I was pretty worried about. But luckily, you know, kudos to the X3 that it bounced around on the floor a bit. The lenses, I mean, I've got lens uh, covers on, but the lens covers didn't really get scratched. I think there is a tiny mark on one now, which I haven't really noticed in any of the filming, but the X3 survived and that was going along at probably about 20 miles an hour, you know, 30 odd kilometers an hour and um, hitting the ground, bouncing around a few times but it survived. Anyway, the lesson I learned was do not use a plastic mount combined with a metal mount. So hopefully you found some of those tips useful. If you um, have got any other comments or questions, please drop them in the, the comments below. And if you can like and click that subscribe button because it's really going to help the channel. Thanks. Bye.